All right, happy Friday, Miami. We are walking around here on Friday morning and we are going to grab breakfast before we head off to our next neighborhood. We stopped by B Bistro and Bakery in Brickell to grab a French toast and I grabbed a ham and egg sandwich that was really good. Definitely worth the stop in Brickle for breakfast. All right guys, for our next neighborhood in Miami, welcome to Little Havana. So we're gonna be going on a little walking tour here and getting some more of the history explained of this area. And we'll look forward to showing you that shortly. graduated as certified tobacco uh, rollers or tabaqueros y tabaqueras. It took them about nine months to do that, but they've been rolling cigars for much, much longer. El entrenamiento de ustedes es nueve meses, pero ¿cuánto tiempo llevan ustedes ya haciendo esto? Más de 35 años. Uf, mucho tiempo. Wow. So yeah, they've been doing this for 35 years. So at this point, you know, it's a, 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 a esta etapa ya, ya ustedes ya... So, they will produce between 100 to 150 cigars in a day. And uh, here's the thing in Cuba, cigar smoking is a humongous culture, uh, which is why in Miami, public, wherever the soil may be similar to that of Cuba, and then they'll cultivate it there. And then they'll roll it themselves, making it a Cuban styled cigar. So technically, the closest thing to a Cuban cigar. Quite similar. <laughs> yeah, man. How After checking out the cigar shop, Michael took us for some sugarcane juice at a little fruit shop next door, and it was really delicious. And I've never had sugarcane juice, but it was super fresh and. Uh, it was only a, a dollar for a little cup, and we certainly enjoyed it. So, there's a lots of different styles. This isn't the cheapest store, by the way, but um, it'll make it really fresh. Look at this. Overall, we really enjoyed Michael's tour. He was able to give us both local and historical perspectives to one of the most interesting neighborhoods in Miami. Both Cuba and Miami's histories are inseparably linked. You really can't understand Miami without understanding Cuba. I definitely hope you'll check out the link in the comments section if you're headed to Miami uh, in order to book one of Michael's walking tours. Tell him Andy said hi. Esquina de la Fama, which is one of the restaurants that Michael recommended for us to come to, and it's known to have a really good Cuban sandwich and a really good mojito.
video. Oh, <laughs> Alright, so what? Did you start drinking it? I don't know. Right, start drinking it. <laughs> well guys we uh we had to go back to that cigar shop that michael showed us so the people that work there they've apparently been rolling cigars for over 30 years and they're from cuba so uh, i trust their quality and so we're gonna maybe have one down here and bring some back home our next stop was Azucar, which is a Cuban ice cream shop in Little Havana. It was really delicious and I tried a few different flavors out. Definitely worth the visit. And it also helps cool you off after spending some time walking around the hot Miami sun. All right guys, it is Friday night in Brickle. We're back in the downtown area and we are going to grab some dinner. We are headed to an Argentinian restaurant called Bayres. Uh, we're gonna check out what they have. The cool thing about being in Miami is that they have so many different kinds of Latin cuisine. So you have obviously Cuban food, you have Colombian food, Puerto Rican food, Argentinian food, pretty much anything you could think of, you know, they probably have it here somewhere. So that's the really exciting thing about being able to eat and explore Miami. So uh, a staple of Argentinian cuisine is grilled meats. And so we ordered something called the periata, which is basically a huge platter with a bunch of different meats that you're supposed to share with somebody else. So it has sausage, blood sausage, steak, chicken, and some other things on it. So we're gonna dive in and see if there's any chance we can finish all of this. One. Julian, you think we can finish this? We should try. <laughs> we're gonna try. We're gonna try. How about mashed Hold on. Give me credit. Hold on. All right, here, hold on. Let me get this. Ready? <laughs> Good. Actually, let's put it. Wow, you just couldn't find the steak. Oh, this one, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, guys. We uh, did not make as much progress. We probably finished about 50% of the platter, so they are kind enough to wrap it up, and we're going to bring it back to the Airbnb and maybe have a little bit more later, but that was uh, quite the hearty meal. Alright guys, we are back at the Airbnb after that massive, insanely massive meal and we are in a food coma. So I think we're going to call it for the night, um, but I definitely would recommend going to Byris. Uh, if you're in the Brickell area, you can get a lot of meat in the kind of traditional style of Argentina. Um, you know, where the parrilla or the grilled meats is really big, so it's definitely worth checking out. Just bring uh, an empty stomach. On the next episode of Andy All Over, we head off to Miami's art district, Wynwood, to explore, grab a few beers, and more. Make sure to tune in. You won't want to miss it.